Hey guys, Horror Philly here. Doing another video, but this one is my rods and reels, bass, trout. I'm a big trout fan when the season's in. Right now it's just too hot to fish for them. So let's get started. This right here is my first expensive trout rod I bought. Uh, it's a G Loomis GL2. Um, some type of blue color. I got it from American Fishing Warehouse, something like that. It was last year's model. They didn't have many left. Got it for like 80 bucks. Anyone who knows G Loomis knows that they make really good stuff. Uh, I, and I always wanted to try a corked Tennessee handle. I would not recommend doing it again. If I could go back and get a different handle, I would have. But with a rod, you know, you could feel a fly on here. That's how sensitive it is. It's a 5 foot ultralight, moderate action, 1 to 4 pound test. 1 32nd to 1 8th ounce lures, and uh, this is my main, my main rod. Uh, really nice, you know, compact, and when I heard blue, I thought it was going to be like some wild off the car, wild blue color, but it's not, you know, it's really, it's not bad at all. This next rod and reel, I first let me say thank you to Joey for giving me a Stratic 2500 FH. My wife's cousin, fisherman, uh, one day he we got told about fishing and he told me he had a reel for me. So you know I'm figuring, you know something really cheap. So we go into his basement. He he hands me this and he hands me a fucking Stratic. So I'm like holy shit, you know, you know he knew how good they were. I know how awesome they were. I have two of them. Uh, just a couple of years, I think, model-wise. This right here I used for my finesse lures, Senkos, uh, drop shot, stuff like that. I've got six pound test, Seaguar red label on it. I wouldn't recommend buying six pound test again. If for some reason, the line's so thin, it just doesn't feel right in my finger when I cast it. I would die eight, possibly ten. But other than that, the cigar is really good. I don't, I don't have no problems with it. Some people tend to have problems with the, the more budget-friendly fluorocarbon, but I don't. I like it a lot. I have that paired up with a PAL diesel and I got this from Tackle Warehouse for it was on sale I got it for it was like $59 uh, I was a little leery because it does not include a warranty with it which which they, which they make you know they state that on the site but for the rod you buy I do believe it's better components and that's why they don't give you the the warranty where they have to charge more for it. This is a six foot ten medium extra fast six twelve pound test line three sixteenths to one ounce. Um, really nice matte black finish. Regular size uh, eyes. It's nice. Uh, it's got the the split handle. Really sharp. Um, well worth the money I spent on it. And I think now they're like $69. I think they're well worth that.
this is my alternate trout rod. It's a Fenwick Eagle GT, sharp, sharp ass rod, you know. Really uh, good price, I think it's like $59. Got it from Cabela's. Um, let's see if I can get all the information on it. Five foot six, one thirty second to one fourth ounce, one to six pound line. This is also a Stratic 1000 FI. Seriously, one of the smoothest reels I've ever bought. Like, this was my first really good spinning reel. You know, you know I was younger, I used to buy junk. Wouldn't last long. But this top-notch reel, got this. This, is, this was also a last year's model. I got it from the Cabela's Bargain Cave. Got it for $110, $115. Got it as a Christmas gift. I love the rod. The rod is sharp. Um, cork handle. Really, I'm not sure if you can see like the detail on it. But it's like carbon fiber-ish. It's really nice. Gold. Or brass right there. It's got a nice, look, the buck cap's nice on it. This is the rod I would use if I was going bass fishing down, down like a stream or a creek. Uh, it's just got that, it's a little longer, you know, I can cast out maybe a little heavier more, maybe like a size 2 spinner or something like that. Um, I wouldn't try anything else as far as like a Senko. It's just, there's too much weight for it. And I got on here, I got tied on here, it's a Rapala Ultralight um, Floating Minnow, you know, like their standard one. It's vampire color, which is sharp. This next combo, um, I bought it when I started getting into bass fishing last year. It's a Cabela's 20 Pro rod. Uh, let's see that Cabela's 20 Pro IM7. Uh, it's a medium heavy, medium heavy, seven foot. 8 to 12 pound test, quarter ounce to 3 fourth ounce lures, paired up with a Pluffiger or a Pluffiger President with 30 pound test Power Pro green braid. Uh, the rod has held up over time. The reel, not so much, but I think that could possibly be because the braid on there. Um, not really caring with the drag because it sounds you can hear it I mean it, I mean it still spins really well but just the drag is like well clunky now uh, I plan to use this for catfish and you know maybe car something like that I mean it's a solidly built reel but I just think I just abused it and uh, regarding the rod I'm not sure if I buy another one um, I'm sort of leery about store brands now that I buy some of like the, the name brand stuff the better name brand stuff but, but the rod's pretty cool you know the rod's really nice it's got nice intertwined threading thread work to it uh, really sharp it's not too heavy it's got the split grip, which I've become a fan of. I like that a lot. And most of my rods are the EVA foam, I guess you call it. And I, I like it, you know. Um, so far, it's held up.
Now this rod and reel has seen some action on it. This is a Daiwa Megaforce 5 foot 6 2 piece ultralight 1 32nd to 1 8th ounce lures 1 to 4 pound test line and this was my first trout rod really sharp you know uh, got it for 10 bucks at Walmart really nice gold gold wrapping on there I my wife snapped it in the car the car window so I had to hack it down to I don't even know how tall it is now, but it's definitely not 5'6". It's maybe like 5 foot, but it doesn't handle either. Like like action, like a 5 foot ultra light rod wood or 5 foot 6. Typical, you know, old school foam kind of rod and reel. Coupled with a Mitchell 310X. Um, I had this reel for about 10 years now. Did a, I did a lot of trout fishing as a kid, you know, again with cheap stuff. And got back into it briefly as a teenager. Went to Dick's and bought this reel. Liked it, you know, the reel still handles good. It's got the double, it's got two different spool. You can change out the line on it. Um, nice left hand retrieve. It's on a right hand retrieve now because I was letting my coworker use it. We went fishing. For Pennsylvania fish for free day. I forgot to mention this and my other trout reel with the Stratic. It's got four pound test strand ultra thin, um, magnet thin. I'm sorry, magnet thin, which I like. Um, and I'm only thinking of changing it this year because I've got more of the six pound test. Uh, red label from Seaguar, so I don't want to like waste it. So other than that, I highly recommend for light line fishing, the, the four pound test Magnathan. It's way thinner than normal four pound test. It's a little more expensive. Uh, it's about $9 a spool, but you can get a couple of seasons out of the spool, so it's not, it's not that bad. Uh, the reel's nice, rod's nice. Use it like as a backup, or if somebody wants to go fishing with me that doesn't have a rod and reel. So, now here's my newest combo my first bait caster. Luz Tournament Pro Speed Spool, 6 4 to 1 gear ratio, 12 pound test, strand big game green, coupled with a Omen Black, Omen 13 Black, 7 foot, 7 foot 1 medium, medium heavy power, 3 eighth to 1 ounce. 12, 20 pound line, uh, not micro guides by any means, but they seem micro-ish, I guess because I'm not used to like a bait caster. This rod and reel is a fucking beast. If you're looking for a reel, your, your first bait caster, um, I recommend Loose. This this has not given me problems yet, and I've really put it through the rigors of fishing with it for almost a season. Still as smooth as it was when I got it. It's got the magnetic braking system, and it's got inside it's got centrifugal braking, and so pretty much you know you won't backlash at all. I keep all four of my centrifugal brakes on, and I just adjust. The, the magnetic braking system to, you know, if it's windy out, day by day settings on the water. It's just a classy looking reel, man. And you know, Luz, dude, Luz has been around for eternity. If I'm not correct, I mean, if I'm correct, I think Luz is one of the first companies who started doing the 
low profile fake casters. It's nice, man. It's, it's butter, dude. You I mean you cast it out with no effort. And the rod, the rod's super sexy. The rod's got like some carbon fiber ish stuff here. It's got half cork, half um, UVA foam, and blank through construction. Uh, really sharp. Um, matte black finish, which is, which is sexy as all hell. It's got the Got the eye holder up top, 13 black. Would I buy another one of these? Yes. But I do want to duck it though. I am infatuated with the with the white fishing rods and I don't think I was gonna I don't think I'd ever buy a Varates now. Although I was a Varates was in the running when I was buying this rod, but I like this rod more. There's just something about white fishing rods. It's just awesome. Nice color to it. And I heard Tucker makes really good stuff, so. I have a Striking Burner on here. I believe it's Ghost Shad pattern. Uh, I haven't caught anything on this spinnerbait yet, but it's also, it's really good stuff. It's got the gold and the silver blades. It's nice. You know, I love how when you spend a little extra on the this, the lures, they give you like the really nice colored skirts. Really sharp. Um, my next bait caster, if I ever get one, which I'm pretty sure I will, is definitely going to be a lose though. I would like to get maybe a BB1 or now I heard for 2014 they're going to start putting left hand on pretty much every model they have so and uh, I real left hand it which I'm I write I'm a righty and uh, I see I see a lot of the pros and a lot of people they just they have the, they have the right hand spinning cast out change hands you know I, I don't want to do that I guess because you know, what if the fish bites as soon as like the lure hits the water and I fumble and lose the fish? You know, it could happen. It couldn't happen. You know, who knows? But I also reel left, so with spinning, so I figured it would be an easy adjustment, and it's been really super easy and super sweet. But uh, stay tuned for another video. This is my rod and reel arsenal. My next video, which will be up this weekend, it's going to be my tackle bag and all my goodies I got so stay tuned guys thanks for watching keep subscribing